In July 2018, a harrowing phone call was made to emergency services. 84-year-old Lawrence Franks confessed to killing his demented wife with an iron pole. After he could no longer cope with her illness, believing that it was an act of mercy. If you like watching true crime, then you'll love watching our channel. So be sure to click that subscribe button for more true crime content. Hello, it's Northwest Ambulance Service here. Just tell me exactly what's happened. I've killed my wife. You've killed your wife? Yeah. Okay, just tell me exactly what happened. What, 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 what exactly has happened? She can't walk. Right. Incontinent. Okay. And I can't cope. Okay. okay. I've killed her. Right. Are you with the patient now? Yeah. Right. How old is the patient? 86. Were any weapons involved? Only a lump of iron. A lump of iron. Okay. Is there any serious bleeding? Not really. Are you right by her now? No, she's in the bedroom. Are you able to go to her with the phone? No. You can't go to her? What's, no. what's stopping you from going to her? What, what, what do you want to know? I, I just want to try and help her. Um, she's dead. She's dead. Okay, we're, going to, we're sending you some help right away. We're going to get there as quickly as we can, okay? How he's done it? What's he done? He's hit, hit her with a bar and smothered her. Next door, don't ruin it. Say that again, sorry? There's a little girl's party next door. Don't use sirens and spoil it. Okay, well, we just need to come and help her as quickly as we can. She's dead. That's all there is. Okay, we're going to get some help there as soon as we can. Thank you. The police have just arrived. Have the police arrived there now? Yes. This okay. is the ambulance you yes, okay. Take a seat for me, sir. Hello, the police. Okay, you're with them, with, you're with, uh, with them now. We are, yeah. All right, I'll leave you with them. Thank you. The killing allegedly happened after the former bus driver and lifeguard's wife, Patricia, had not recognized him. In an act of desperation, he struck her on the back of her neck multiple times with an iron scaffolding pole as she lay in their bed in their home on Francis Road in Gatley, Stockport. To make sure that his beloved wife was truly dead, he then smothered her with a pillow. According to authorities, the couple had been married for over 60 years and were devoted entirely to one another. When Patricia had been diagnosed with dementia about 10 years prior, they tried to live life as normal. They continued to go on holidays together, and Franks had made alterations to their home to make living easier as they age. Franks had promised his wife that he would never place her in a care facility and vowed to live out their days together at home. But as the 86-year-old's dementia worsened to the point that she was incontinent and unable to walk, and he had recently been in hospital for a hernia, he could no longer cope with both his wife's and his own deteriorating health, and knew he would soon have to break his promise. The day he killed her, she no longer recognized her dear husband. And this was his devastating breaking point. In her younger years, Patricia had worked for the NHS as a pharmacy assistant for 30 years. And in her time, she had reportedly witnessed negative experiences of elderly patients. Defense's Vanessa Thomas stated in court that it was an unfortunate case and that Franks knew he could no longer give her the adequate care she needed. But he also knew he could not put her in a care home where he felt she would be left to rot. Doctors ruled that Lawrence Franks had suffered from adjustment disorder, which had impaired his ability to make a rational judgment. He pleaded guilty to manslaughter with diminished responsibility at Manchester Crown Court. Judge David Stockdale described the case as extraordinary and heartrending, and his two-year prison sentence was suspended. Franks was, however, ordered to undergo a 20-day rehabilitation activity course. In August 2020, a 17-year-old teenager was paddleboarding when caught in rough waters and separated from his board. Little did he know that keeping his phone in a waterproof pouch in his wetsuit would save his life. Coast Guard Rescue. Oh my god, thank you. I, I'm, I'm like 400 miles, now 400 meters off the coast. I, to, I don't know where it is, but it's a flight port fairly, uh... Uh, uh, the, the two islands off the coast. Yeah, so what's, there. what's the issue with it? At the what's, the, what's the problem? You want a paddleboard or a kayak or what you're doing at the moment? Well, I had a paddleboard, but now I'm I'm drowning. I have a life, ba no life jacket. You have a life jacket. Yeah, I'm really struggling here. 
keep calm and rest back and lie on your back as much as you can with your legs wide apart and infuse your The waves are really bad now! Oh. That's, that's fine, you will float over the water. What's your name? Alfie. Your name's Alfie. Is your paddleboard near you at all at the moment? No, not at all. Uh, we've requested a helicopter. Uh, we've also requested the Abbasoft lifeboat as well. All right. Just keep All breathing right. in and out slowly, and just relax, and you will float. Luckily, you're wearing your life jacket, as you said. How old are you, Alfie? Oh, 17. You're 17. I'm starting to get very scared. Please, 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 Alfie, don't panic at all. Um, okay. Oh. Just, just don't, don't panic at all, like I said. Just stay on your back, stay calm. Okay. And like I said, you will float. Where are you? Can you hear the helicopter at all? Can you hear? Yeah. Can you hear a helicopter there? It. Hello, Alfie. Are you still there? Whoa, 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 whoa! Me. Alfie was paddleboarding in some gnarly waves near Puthelli in North Wales when he was terrifyingly separated from his board and would have been tragically lost at sea. But he was in luck. His waterproof pouch came to the rescue when he could use his phone to call Coast Guard Rescue Services for help. RNLI lifeboats and a helicopter were able to track the young men down about 40 minutes after the call had been made. And Alfie was pulled from the water and immediately flown to the hospital. Upon arrival, and showed hypothermia signs from swallowing seawater and nearly drowning in the cold ocean. However, he was released by medics later the same day and did not suffer long-lasting injuries. The Abersoak Lifeboat Station continues to urge individuals planning on paddleboarding to carry safety equipment, wear the safety leash, and take a form of communication with them on every trip into the sea. They also added that it is essential to get the proper training and not exceed personal capabilities, stressing that someone should always know when you're going paddleboarding and when you plan to return. In March 2015, Constance Hollinger received a call from a 12-year-old girl who a 68-year-old man sexually assaulted. After the internal review of the call, she received a five-day unpaid suspension for rude and unprofessional behavior. Go ahead. Quaver Police, Hollander. Hello? Yes, um... Um... Hello? No. Hello? Hello, what happened? Yes, yes, yes. What did I tell her? Hold on. Hello? Yes, yes. Um... Yeah, um... This is old guy who touched me, but I was this is who? Santana. What are you calling the police for? Um, because this, we're living with this old guy, and then while I was sleeping, he touched me, and I, of course, I didn't like it, and then. How old are you? And then, huh? How old are you? I'm twelve. I'm twelve, and he's sixty-eight. What's the phone number you're calling from? Um. I don't know who, what's his phone number. Hold on. Hold on. So what's the address? Where are your parents at? Inside. I already told them. And what they say? That they, that they were going to press prices on them, that I have to call you or something. Is he still there? Huh? Is he still there? Yes. And how old is he? 68. Hold on a second. How did he touch you? Um, he has like Oh, hold on. Mingo! Hold on. What what clothes he has on? Hold on. When did this happen? This morning. This morning? I yes. I told my mom as soon as I came back from school. Because it was already too late to tell her. So you told your mother when you came home from school? Yes. 
Because um he has like blue pants with I think a black shirt and a black jacket. There are we in his house and he's here. What in his house that he's here? And you said this occurred this morning? Yes. And, and why didn't you tell anyone this morning? Because it was already too late to leave. And I had to hurry up because I was also waiting for the bus. And uh, that he's about to go. He's about to go where? To his sister's, to his uh, daughter's house. Does he have a car? No, his daughter's coming to pick him up. Okay, so are they going to stop him or try to stop him or? I don't know. Ma, Ma, you say if you're going to try to stop him or something. Can you hold him there till we get to him? Huh? They, they going to hold him there till we get there? Hold on, hold on. Hello? Yes. Are you going to hold the mail there? I don't know. He's got his coat on. He's calling on his family. I don't know. He said he's calling on his family to come and get him. And uh, he's an elder guy. I don't want to hurt him because I don't want to hurt him. You know what I mean? I don't want no problems. You know what I mean? You, you don't want to hurt him. Because he, this is not my house. This is his house. We were saying. But is that your daughter? Yes, it is my daughter. He, so he sexual, sexually assaulted your daughter, but you don't want to hurt him? Okay. Uh, hey, hey. I, I, as much as I want to, I, I got two little babies right here with me, holding my hand, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. But he sexually assaulted your daughter. Yes, I'm here. I want you to come right now before he leaves, because I don't want it to... Well, don't let him leave. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, just get here. I'm not going to let him go there. You got the address? Yes, ma'am. Okay. They'll be out there. Constance Hollinger, the same dispatcher who had been previously suspended for eight days after her involvement in the Tamir Rice case in 2014, has yet again been disciplined for her misconduct in her role as an emergency operator. Hollinger had reportedly answered a call from a 12-year-old girl reporting sexual abuse at the hand of a 68-year-old man. According to an internal disciplinary request letter, Hollinger had handled the call in a rude and unprofessional manner. The letter was written after the call had been reported to Hollinger's superiors in November 2015, when it was discovered as a result of a criminal trial. In her previous violation of conduct, Hollinger had taken a call from a man who had called to report a guy who was described as a potential juvenile, was pointing a gun that was numerously labeled as probably fake outside the Cleveland Rec Center. The dispatcher failed to say the gun was very likely fake when relaying this information. This was cited as a crucial error that led to the shooting of Tamir Rice. The 12-year-old child was gunned down by police only moments after they had arrived on the scene, thinking that the gun in his hand was real. Later, the gun was identified as a pellet gun, and the 12-year-old died in hospital shortly after he was rushed in for treatment. Samaria Rice, Rice's mother, had called the disciplinary action unacceptable, and her attorney protested the action as well, stating that eight days for gross negligence resulting in the death of a 12-year-old boy was pathetic. During her internal disciplinary hearing for the call in March 2015, Hollinger pleaded not guilty to several conduct violations, but was later found guilty and was suspended for five days without pay. According to the suspension notice, the disciplinary action against Hollinger was to remain in her personnel file for three years. In November 2018, a Champion Township man, Billy Ray Morrow Sr., broke into the home of Heather York and her husband, Kenneth. The attempted burglar was shot in the arm and later charged with aggravated burglary. What's your emergency? Somebody's breaking into our house. What do you got? Hall Street. How many are there? I don't know. Where are they at? I don't know. I don't know. He's coming in. He's coming in. 
All right. Where are you at in your house? In the living room. What does he look like? I don't know. We got the, the lights are out. All right. Oh, my God. Where are you at in the house? In the living room. Where is he coming in at? The back door. My husband's tapping all on him. Oh, my God. All right. Stay on the line with me. Stay on the line. Oh, my God. All right. What's your husband's name? Oh, my God. My husband shot him. My right. husband shot him. All right. All right. Stay on the line with me. Husband just shot him. Where's the male lad he shot? In, in the hallway. Is he in the house? All right. What does he look like? I don't know. I don't Do you know where he house. shot? Yes, I don't know. Is he on the ground? He's on the ground. My husband told me to get on the ground. Okay. He's in the house. He's in the kitchen. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. What's your name, ma'am? You're doing a great job. I need you to take a really deep breath for me, okay? Oh, my God. Okay. Is your husband able to talk to me on the phone? No, I'm not. I'm not going in there. I'm like, but I'm not going in there. What, ma'am? We got, I'm not going in there. Our, our whole yard is fenced in. Okay. I don't. Where is your husband at in the house with the gun? <laughs> He's in the dining room. Where's the mail at still? He's in the kitchen. My husband's got the gun on him. All right. Is Where is he shot? Ask your husband where he is shot. Where is he shot at? In the arm. In the arm? Don't go near him. Is he breathing? Don't go near him. Uh, is the male subject to you guys shot breathing? Yeah, he's breathing. He's talking to him. Oh, my Y'all, you're doing okay. I need you to go to the front door, okay? I need you to tell your husband to stay where he is. We have an officer pulling up on scene right now. I need you to, I need the husband, I need you to instruct your husband to put the gun away. Officers are at the front door. Go to the front door and open it. Tell your husband to put the gun down. Eight-year-old who had attempted to break into the home on Hall Street at about 1 a.m. was shot in the arm by Kenneth York as his wife was on the phone to 911. According to the homeowners, they heard their dogs barking and loud noises coming from their kitchen, and the suspect had allegedly broken through one of the glass panes in the wooden door and managed to unlock it. Kenneth York had reportedly yelled that he had a gun repeatedly, but Morrow continued to make his way into the home and that is when a shot was fired. Kenneth managed to get Morrow to the ground with his hands up where they awaited police. Morrow Sr. was taken to hospital. He was later booked into Trumbull County Jail, still in his hospital gown, and charged with aggravated burglary. The burglar reportedly has a long history with the police and with breaking the law. According to Kenneth York, he keeps the 38 caliber pistol in the house for his family's protection and it's not the only one he owns. A shaken up, Heather York had credited their safety and awareness of the break-in attempt to their dogs, who barked when Morrow had been outside. She stated that they would probably still been asleep in bed if it weren't for them. 
Watch more stories like this as they come out by subscribing to our channel and switching on notifications. In January 2017, Boreas, Charles Dowdy, and Daniel Simcoe, both 31 years old, were arrested by police after their eight-year-old son overdosed on heroin that had allegedly been hidden inside one of his toys. 911, what's the address of your emergency? Um, what's the address, babe? 144 Milton. 144 Milton. Okay, what's going on there? Um, for some reason, my son's not breathing. How old is he? He's seven. Babe, I don't think he's breathing. Seven years old, not breathing in Berea. 144 yes. Milton. Yes, Street. please hurry. Okay, stay on the phone with me, okay? Please hurry. Do you guys want to do CPR? Uh, yes. Okay, do you know how to do it, or do you need me to give you directions? Oh, he isn't, babe. He's not breathing. Move, move. I got him. Hold on, I'm going to put that speaker on. Okay. Hello? 911? Yes, I just called. I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. Is he not breathing for sure? Yes, he's not breathing. Okay, you want to start CPR? Yes. Okay. Is he choking on anything? Oh, I think he was sleeping, and I think what happened is he rolled over, and I don't think he, he could breathe. I think he was, like, in the pillow, and he was, like, suffocated. Okay. Can you get him flat on his back on the floor or on a yeah. hard surface? Uh, on a hard surface on the floor? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Okay, put the heel of your hand on the center of his chest, right between his nipples. Okay. And then put your other hand on top of that and push down hard and fast at least two inches in depth. Okay. And just keep doing that. Try to pump twice every second for at least 100 compressions per minute. Is he making any kind of noise? Yes. He is? Yeah. Okay, put your face down to his um, no or mouth and see if he's breathing. No. What kind of noise is he making? Just making like a, a, a it, noise. I'm sorry, like a what noise? A huffing noise. Does he kind of sound like he's gurgling? Yeah. Okay, keep doing the compressions. And if you get tired, if there's somebody there that can take over when you get tired, but just keep doing it. The squad should be there any minute. Open the door. They're here, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hang up. Keep doing it until they walk in, okay? okay. All right, bye-bye. Charles Dowdy begged 911 to hurry to his son's aid after he had stopped breathing. The child was immediately rushed to Southwest General Medical Center, where he was resuscitated. A urine test soon revealed heroin, Xanax, and fentanyl in his system. And medics found prescription pills as well as heroin in the child's sock. Police found used needles and syringes in the home and believed both parents were high when they spoke with them at the hospital while their child was undergoing treatment. Upon interrogation, Dowdy confessed to using drugs earlier that day and the couple was arrested at the hospital and charged with possession of drugs and child endangerment. They were held on a $150,000 bond and were forbidden to contact their child. In recent years, opiate addiction in Ohio and all of America has skyrocketed. A neighbor who has chosen to remain anonymous believes that this incident marks a new rock bottom for this drug epidemic. Absolutely horrible, the whole epidemic thing, he stated. It's just way out of hand and it's hitting awful close to home now. Real close to home. We live on the same street. It's devastating to hear. The eight-year-old was placed into the custody of his grandparents and according to neighbors, he appears to be doing well. In July 2018, Cleveland man Shannon Lamb was accused of not one, but two murders and reportedly shot himself in the head after fleeing from police on foot and into the woods near Greenville. Go Shane, please. 
Um, yes, you need to send some uh, units over to Santa Cruz. What's going on there? I shot my wife last night. He says Santa Cruz? Yes. There's a dog in the house. And he's a sweet dog. He's not going to bother anybody, but I'm sure he's upset. Okay, sir. What is your name? Um, that's all I feel like saying right now. Just go and, and take care of her. Uh, you'll find all of her um, family's phone numbers and things in her phone. Okay, we'll and contact them. Okay, what is her name? Amy Prentice. Amy Prentice? Yes. Lamb had reportedly suffered a spider bite earlier that summer, which caused his face to swell and allegedly became tormented by his swollen appearance. According to detectives, the professor had missed multiple scheduled classes at Delta State University, even after his hours were reduced. Apparently, he had also become increasingly delusional and isolated. After shooting his girlfriend, 41-year-old Amy Prentice, in her home in Gaudier, Mississippi, he reportedly told the family that it was an accident and wrote a letter apologizing for her death, which read, I am so sorry. I wish I could take it back. I loved Amy, and she is the only person who ever loved me. Amy had allegedly tried to stop him from shooting himself, but the gun went off accidentally, and she was shot once in the head. But Lamb did not stop there. After shooting Amy, he then drove to Delta State University, where he killed his fellow professor and father of three, Ethan Schmidt, in his office. In the time between the first and second shooting, Lamb had reportedly contacted his family to tell them that he was going to kill himself because he was not going to jail. A 500-mile manhunt had begun, and police tracked Lamb down using CCTV footage and monitoring the number plate of the Dodge Avenger he was driving, the car that belonged to Amy. There has been speculation over a love triangle between the two victims and Lamb, but this is reportedly untrue. The victims had only met briefly at a Christmas party at Lamb's home once before and had no other contact since. Police believe that the spider bite caused Lamb to suffer from mental health issues that led to the killings. There has also been the deliberation of the possibility that Lamb and his girlfriend had entered into some sort of suicide pact but none of these are conclusive as investigations are still ongoing. At a vigil held for Ethan Schmidt, he was remembered by his bereaved wife and three children and college students, friends, and colleagues. He was described by many as friendly, kind, devoted to his family and his students. That's it for today. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting, and subscribe to join us in the next episode of True 911.